everyone, Dr. Ruby from Pain Free and Fit and Walk Away Back Pain. Today, a great video on how walking uphill can help you with your spinal stenosis, spondylolisthesis, and facet syndrome. Hope you enjoy. So one of the things I've learned in over 30 years of clinical practice dealing with patients with spinal stenosis, spondylolisthesis, and facet syndrome is that many patients are not necessarily motivated to exercise and to be in a fitness on a regular basis. Those that are, it's great, it's simple to give rehab exercises, but a lot of us aren't necessarily motivated. That's why I developed the Walk Away Back Pain Program. It allows us to use walking, which we all do anyway, and modify or tweak the way we walk slightly to get the benefits of corrective exercises to improve mechanics that relieve the symptoms of spinal stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome. We're going to take an excerpt from my book, Walk Away Back Pain, today, and we're going to talk about how uphill walking can be beneficial for stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome. When we walk uphill, and that could be either out on the road with a hill, it could be in the gym with a treadmill, as we approach an incline, naturally our body weight, gravity, wants to pull us back. The way the body resists that is it contracts the abdominal muscles. By keeping the tailbone under or pubic bone up as the abs contract and the bottom of the rib cage down, it centers our center of gravity more in a forward and upward direction, which disallows us falling backwards. Now that's very advantageous for those of us with spinal stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome. If you've seen any of our other videos on the channel, you know we're talking about all those conditions needing flexion of the lumbar spine, meaning we need to contract and we need to train and condition our abdominal muscle activity to be able to flex and resist extension because backwards bending in the lower back aggravates all of those conditions. So by simply walking on a treadmill each day, going out and doing a little uphill walking, you're going to make sure that the abdominal muscles receive the necessary stimulus they need to stay better conditioned, to help you in your daily activities to avoid that extension. This can be a great posture changing exercise. The more you practice uphill walking, what you realize is as the abdominal muscles condition and the soft tissues stretch out of the back, when you stand flat, you'll be less likely to have that anterior pelvis where the pubic bone is lower than the tailbone. That anterior pelvis, remember, aggravates back pain. So after walking for a while and in a good program, you'll actually be stretching the soft tissues, the fascia, the discs, the joint capsules, muscles, ligaments, those soft tissues that hold you in that anterior pelvic tilt, and you'll be conditioning and correcting that posture so when you stand still, you have a more level pelvis, and during the day, normal standing, walking activities are gonna be less likely to irritate spinal stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome. If you like this video on spinal stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome with uphill walking, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. Thumbs up to help me share this valuable information with others. And remember, if you're looking for a great program to analyze what your mechanics are, how to include walking variations and modifications to help with your back pain symptoms, check out our Walk Away Back Pain program available at painfreeandfit.com. I hope this video on uphill walking helps you with your spinal stenosis, spinal anesthesis, and facet syndrome.